I can't believe it. Ma'a Tanovasa with a couple of sacks tonight, and he's a guy who rotates. He's listed as a, a second unit defensive tackle behind Michael Dean Perry, but as is the case with so many teams these days with the defensive line, especially in the mile high altitude, he sees a lot of playing time. And he's been seeing a lot of that time in New England's backfield. A couple of sacks tonight. He had three coming into the game. First down at the 49-yard line as Bledsoe throws, and it's a pass that goes right through the hands of Sean Jefferson. Second down. Well, the Bronco defense, for the most part tonight, has done a great job. Early on, there were three tipped Elway passes. That one by Keith Trailer. That one, Neil Smith. And then this interception by Mobley run in for a touchdown. And they've pressured Bledsoe to the extent that Tanavasa has those two sacks, one there, one here. So apart from that one breakdown on the pass to Byers, they've been great. Second and ten. Bledsoe going deep. Contact, and the pass is thrown out of bounds. Gary and Gordon and Sean Jefferson one-on-one. -on -one. Well, Jefferson pulled up because he was out of bounds. He's ineligible to come back in and catch the ball. And there was a little contact. He was complaining that Darian yeah. Gordon uh, was, had made the contact past the five-yard area where he can make that contact. Let's take a look. He's out of bounds at this point. And Darian Gordon has really filled in well since Torrey James went down in three seasons. No way. Neither. These two Neither guys can come in. They're on a field of their own. And it's not the one everybody else is using. The Gordon has really filled in for Torrey James, who went down with an injury in the preseason. Former San Diego Char has done a good job. Third down and ten. Bledsoe guns one, and it's caught by Jefferson in front of Tim McIver, the much-traveled defensive back who'd come into the game, and McIver played him softly, and Jefferson had some room and picks up 19, first down. And Bledsoe had the time. Well, that's a real delayed corner blitz. Darian Gordon came in off the corner. The Patriots uh, did a really nice job from a pass protection standpoint. Gave Bledsoe, look at that good look he gets down the field. Passing lane in the middle, wide open. And when you blitz, you're not supposed to have that much time to look downfield for a receiver. Bledsoe did. Midway, second quarter, they run a draw. Martin can't get out of the backfield. He's tackled by Mike Lotus. 14-7 Denver, and let's get a report from Lynn Swan. Lynn. Now, what I'm observing on the sidelines is a great sense of urgency in this ball game. Every, every play, it seems like they feel like might be the difference in the ball game. Now, we've seen it this year so far in games like Oakland, Kansas City on the last drive to win a ball game. Pittsburgh and Philadelphia chances to win it with a field goal. But now we're seeing it on every play from the beginning of this ball game. Great level of intensity, Al. It's really picked up second down and 12 from the 34-yard line. Bledsoe guns it over the middle and incomplete at the 30-yard line. Mobley with the coverage on the play, and the pass was intended for Keith Byers. And Mobley all over Keith Byers. It was just good coverage downfield. Bledsoe had all the time he needed. And just fine coverage by the secondary of Denver. Bledsoe, no place to put it. The New England offensive line has really tightened up here in the second quarter after getting overrun a bit in the first quarter and allowing some sacks, some tip balls. These guys have tightened it up here in quarter number two. Well, give them credit. This thing could have really gotten out of hand. They've come back. Third down and 12 from the 34-yard line. Keep it on the ground. Curtis Martin takes it to the 21-yard line and a first down. Hey. Tackled by Atwater. And boy, did he give a little lesson to that guy right there, John Mobley. He is, it, he it, is clean. He it, is clean and comes up with nothing. I don't think there's a running back around other than maybe Barry Sanders that will make the first tackler more first tacklers miss. Hello. Mobley just caught air. He didn't even touch him. He didn't even get a fingertip on him. He has got great moves. He's so quick and he maintains speed while he's making those quick moves. Mobley will uh, revisit that in his mind a few times tonight. They have Martin in the slot this time. Bledsoe looks the other way, and he hits Terry Glenn, who set a rookie record last year, caught 90 balls, but twisted his ankle on opening day, has been sparingly used since, and in fact fumbled earlier tonight. He tried to come back two weeks ago against Chicago, and that was just too early. He had a severely sprained ankle. And for a receiver, they need to be able to cut on either foot. And I, I think he is favoring it. They say he's 100%. Uh, if he were 100%, we'd see more of Terry Glenn 
in the offensive game plan tonight. Looked like he made a good cut there and got them both down easily. He's certainly on the way back. Second and two from the 14, and it is Martin. They fake the end around, and Martin takes it to the 12, and that should be enough for a first down. He's tackled there by Steve Atwater. Steve Atwater's a guy that's been nursing that bad right shoulder. He thinks he's close to being all the way back. It's just, you know, you just can't play in this league without playing nicked. You can't find a guy down on that field that doesn't have something that hurts. Mm -hmm. Did not give him a uh, very propitious spot, does he? Is a little short of the first down. Bledsoe in the red zone, completing 61% of his passes. The league average, 46%. So he's been hot down deep. They just man is the big tight end coach. Third and a short one, and they give it to Byers, and he bowling balls his way to the 11-yard line on a first down. The ball came loose, but after he was down. Byers this time used as a running back. We've seen him as a receiver. We've seen him as a flanked out receiver coming out of the backfield. He's done it all here in one half of football. Well, they're actually going to spot the ball closer to the 12-yard line now. And that will force... Again, the change to be brought in. Here's a couple guys that have been to the war a few times. Bill Romanowski, Ben Coates. And Romanowski dispatches Mr. Coates with well, relative the, ease there. One of the things both these teams are trying to do is disturb the tight ends coming off the ball. Shannon Sharp for Denver and Ben Coates there. And if they come off free, chances are they're going to be the intended receiver. I think it's uh, safe to say they're both better receivers than they are blockers. Oh, yeah. Well, Byers appeared to have made the first down significantly, but the ball must have come out, and they spotted back at the 12-yard line. And now New England with a, an interesting choice, to say the least, and they at least will line up to go for it. They will not be able to change it, whatever they come out of the huddle with, because it's going to be very noisy. This stadium will be rocking. If they go for it, a play befitting the AFC champion. Bledsoe will keep it himself, and... Great search. Picks it the good first down search. at the 10-yard line. And a good call. You don't have to worry about your tackles. Hearing the snap number of the guards, you just search behind the center. That's Bruce Armstrong, Max Lane, Dave Woolabaugh, Todd Rucci, and Zephyrus Moss. That was an excellent surge up front by the Patriot offensive lineman. They won that battle, and they won it handily. 6'5 and 233 is Drew Bledsoe. He's like a big fullback coming at you. That's a surge. Ball at the 10, it's first and goal, and it's Martin looking for room. And he'll take it to the eight yard line where it'll be second down and goal. Talked about that effectiveness of Bledsoe inside the red zone. One of the reasons is the big tight end. We started to talk about it, Ben Coates. He is uh, massive at 6'5". And they have timed out a lot of things together. Well, the tweaking they did on their offensive line. There's Steve Sidwell. He's their defensive coordinator. As he formulates how he's going to handle it when they get the ball. Second and goal. Four-man rush, and Bledsoe, under pressure, has to throw it out of the end zone. He looks for a flag. He says, Jerry, where's the roughing the passer? Mark Wright says, I've been around for a long time, Drew. That ain't it. Interesting formation for New England. They had Byers split to the left, and Coates was lined up as a wide receiver way out to the right. That's where Bledsoe wanted to go, but he was covered and just threw it away. Well, and he landed really awkwardly. He's complaining that Alfred Williams slammed him into the ground on his follow-through. Third and goal, 13th play of the drive. Denver leading by seven, 321 left in the first half. Mile high shaking as Bledsoe throws, and it's dropped at the four-yard line by Sean Jefferson. So they go for it on fourth down and make it, but still will have to send in the field goal unit now. Pass a little behind Jefferson, Frank. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not the easiest ball to handle. Let's look at it and see. Now he's also knowing he's going to have to get it into the end zone. They're going to have to bring the field goal team out. He was interested more in running with the football than making sure he lifted it into his hands. 
Adam he was trying to make a play. Adam Vinatieri has not missed a kick this year, but most of his field goals have been chip shots. A la this one, 26 yards. Trupa to put it down, and Vinatieri to bang it through. So he's seven for seven in field goal attempts this season. And New England draws within four. And stop and think. We were looking at a 14-0 ball game. Denver driving. It looked like the route was on. And then John Elway forces one long. Willie Clay comes up with that interception. And whoa, what a different ball game we've had since then. Well, this, New England has really settled down, too. They, I mean, they, they, were, they, looked, they were really erratic in that opening drive. And then the second drive, when they turned it over, and uh, they've really come back together again. That's a real credit to... Out of the players too, but to the coaching staff. It is. I mean, it's an early season litmus test for New England because let's face it, the four teams they've beaten have a composite record of seven and sixteen. They've had three rounds and the overtime win over the Jets. And tonight, I mean, this is the ultimate litmus test at Denver. And to be down 14-0 and be, you know, on the verge of just caving. Well, in Denver's let's Denver's 5-0 record hasn't exactly come at the hands of vanquishing. Mm -hmm. The best teams in the National Football League. They open up with that win over Kansas City, but you know Seattle, St. Louis, Cincinnati, and Atlanta. Since then, Vinatieri kicks. Hebron will run it out of the end zone from five yards back. He takes it out to the 25-yard line, and Teddy Bruschi makes the tackle. With 3:01 to play in the opening half. John Elway went to school at Stanford, as you all know, and. Number one pick in 1983. Father Jack at one time the Stanford coach. And a lot of talk about, you know, how much longer for Elway. But the way John looks, three, four, maybe even longer. I hope so. I, love, I like to be around. I, lo I love to watch him play. Me too. Five receivers set. Elway throws. And it is caught by Willie Green, who came over from the Carolina Panthers as a free agent tackled by Jimmy Hitchcock. I like to do him watch him do something like that. Pass rush right in his face still gets it off. 211th NFL game. Well, that puts it in perspective. Johnny Unitas and Len Dawson played in the same number and the record is held by Sir Francis Parkinson in 240. And as we mentioned at the top he's won more football games and as a starting quarterback than anybody in the history of this game. Second down and four. Five wides. And that is caught by McCaffrey at the 37. He's tackled by Ty Long. It's a first down. Denver can use this five wide receiver because Elway, when he doesn't have he doesn't have max protection, but he can move around so easily in that pocket. So comfortable. He reads the pressure, whether he can see it or not, coming from his backside. And he can also still pull that ball down and pick up a lot of yardage with the run. They're going to let it run down to the two minute warning. And I think McCaffrey right now wishes he could catch a ball in front of somebody else other than Ty Law. Two minute warning. foreign land. Jack Moore, you are charged with the intention of homicide. A brilliant attorney. I would like to talk to the American embassy. An accusation of murder. I'm innocent. You are in contempt. You will be sentenced to death. Richard Gere. Sentences are carried out within a week. October 31st, defiance begins. I know what I did and did not do. Red Corner, rated R, starts Friday, October 31st. Many people think value investing is buying cheap stocks. That's not right. Value investing is buying inexpensive stocks that are inexpensive for the wrong reason. Oftentimes, companies are very good at their businesses. They don't have to sell new stock. They don't have to sell new bonds. So they don't get a lot of research focus from Wall Street. At the Prudential Small Company Value Fund, we can do the homework that other people won't do, and we can find the great opportunities to make money for our shareholders. If you want the theater experience, without that theater experience, get a home theater system at Circuit City and enjoy it in the privacy of your own home. Circuit City, you can't get a lower price. We guarantee it. 
Monday Night Football on the internet, live play-by-play, -play, drive charge, stats, and all of the rest. You can check it out at abcmnf.com, keyword ABC Sports. <laughs> well, there's uh, Scott Bentley. He's a pretty good athlete. He's been signed as the field goal kicker, and Jason Elam, who's the regular kicker, but has a hip flexor. And so far, Bentley has not been called on to do very much except kick a couple of extra points, and he's been successful on both. And they had a great kickoff deep into the end zone. Yeah. John Elway out of the gun, hands the ball to Terrell Davis, and Davis hey, gets knocked down at the 40-yard line. He's tackled there by Todd Collins. Yeah. Hurry up offense. Nobody does it better than John Elway. And the Broncos have all of their timeouts. Crowd very respectful, so he can make the calls. Oh, and it's Oops. intercepted by Willie Clay again. Clay with two interceptions. First down, New England at the 44-yard line, and New England has all of its timeouts. Hey, John is not going to be happy with this night. He's been careless with the football. He's thrown into coverage. He's thrown a couple he knows he shouldn't have thrown, and he's missed a couple of receivers that have been open. Just sometimes you get so confident that you can get it there with that gun that he's got. And Willie Clay reading him all the way. John's looking well, he's locked all on McCaffrey. the way to McCaffrey, and Willie Clay locked onto his eyes, and he was right there. Even the great ones will do it. You get careless instead of looking it off. That's an interception, though, that could have easily been dropped. That was just great work by Clay. And New England goes to work. Led so under pressure and just has to heave it away because John Mobley forced the issue. There, the crowd's booing. The Broncos are yelling, but he got that ball back to the line of scrimmage. The quarterback was out of the pocket. There's no grounding. The quarterback was out of the pocket. He has to be outside of the tackle yep. on either side of the line of scrimmage. That's all it takes, and then and he has can to throw it away. Yep. Mark probably went to check with an, the other official who had a better view. There he goes on the move. Yep. Close, but appeared to be outside the pocket. Second down and 10. Hey, it's over! And now Martin to the 44-yard line on a play that doesn't fool anybody. New England has all of its timeouts. But in no hurry, to, with a minute and 15 and three timeouts, there's, there's no, not a necessity here to use one well, at I, this I moment. I think there'd be a little urgency, though. I mean, you're, now you're down to one minute. Well, you, you're playing two games here, too. It's, you you want to score, but you don't want to score too early. And you got a third down. You want to make sure you can get the first. But I'd be moving a little quicker yeah. than that. You're right, I think so. I agree with you. Well, what they need to do here is convert. That's the most important thing right now. There's a third down and 10 from the 44. And they do convert. It's caught at the 29-yard line by Sean Jefferson. Takes a hard hit from Tyrone Braxton. First down, 28-yard line. And Sean gets up, and New England will take a timeout. But Sean's hurt. He's, he took a shot on that right shoulder, and he was going to stay down, I think, and then he realized the time was a factor. He takes a tremendous shot on his right shoulder. Right there. Tyrone Braxton came in and gave him the pop, and to the 75,000 strong sitting here in Denver, Colorado, what in the first quarter was unthinkable now is approaching reality and that might be that the Patriots are going to get back into this football game by either making it a one point deficit or maybe even take the lead if they score a touchdown. This is quite a comeback on the part of the New Englanders. So the halftime report Chris Berman will be along from New York with halftime highlights. We sat down yesterday with Drew Bledsoe. You get to know the New England quarterback a little better a guy who has uh, guided his team now back very much into the game Willie Clay with the interception when the score was 14 nothing then Bledsoe linked with Byers the next drive resulted in a field goal and here they are with a chance to as Dan said cut it to one and or with, take the lead and with two timeouts they still have the luxury of being able to run the football if they want to from the 28 yard line they fake the run Bledsoe's going to go for it all into the end zone and Incomplete. Terry Glenn leaping, and he also had to look at the back line to see where he was and couldn't hold it in. And Ray Crockett was right there with him. Yeah, that, I think Bledsoe, he just kind of was throwing that away. If anyone's going to get it, he's going to get it at the back of the end zone and be his man. 
but Crockett, good coverage for Broncos. Well, I think you're right, Frank. It's either going to be a superior catch by his own guy, or it's just going to be second down. Mm -hmm. And that's a smart pass. Watch Glenn. He'll take a look, even though he drops it. Where are my feet? Yeah, you got him in. He looked, he looked first, though. Huh? Second down and 10 from the 28-yard line. Heavy rush. Romanowski dumps Bledsoe, and the pass is incomplete. Romanowski came in almost untouched. Oh, he put a shot on Bledsoe. Not almost untouched. He was untouched. <laughs> yeah, he was untouched. And like shot out of a gun. It was a little delayed blitz. He split the guard tackle gap, and Romanowski came in clean. He is what you'd call the hot linebacker. Bledsoe looking to the right. He knows he's got a hot guy to that side. He turned just in time to see Romanowski about three feet away. Fortunately, Byers was there, so he didn't get called for throwing it away. Third down, 10, 28-yard line. Play clock all the way down, and Bledsoe buying time. Screen. Oh, that didn't fool anybody. John Mobley smelled it. Martin made the catch, and he's lucky he still has all of his senses. You know, we're going to see Mobley in Hawaii this year. <laughs> now you're looking at doubt. on a loss. Oh, that's a significant loss on the play because it moves it back to the 32 from the 28, and it makes it that much harder for Vinatieri to convert a field goal. How's that? Since the best, his best field goal is only 50 yards. The best in college was 51, so he's got... <laughs> He's got a lot of altitude working for him, but he's not within range yet. Mobley had the luxury there of being locked up one-on-one -on -one with Curtis Martin, so he's just sitting there, and that's like a dream come true where you see the screen folding right in front of you like that, and, and, and before the blockers get there, you can time your hit on the running back. Adam Vinatieri now will have to kick a 49 or 50-yard field goal. We'll see where they'll spot it exactly in a moment. And again, he's... His best is uh, 50 yards as a pro. He had one at South Dakota State at 51 yards. I would not have been afraid to run the ball in that possession if I was the Patriots. Mm -hmm. With two timeouts, uh, getting Curtis Martin, uh, their thinking pass, it's a little hindsight now, but a, a running play, even if it didn't get you the first down, it still gets you in better field goal position. And Half. the altitude's going to help here. Half ends on this play. Two for the spot. It'll be a 49-yarder. Benatieri with plenty of distance and the accuracy. By far the longest attempt he's had this season. His prior long 34, he bangs it home from 49. And the Patriots on the verge of a collapse early on, down 14 zip, have scrambled right back into it. Good one in Denver, living up to expectations. Halftime score 14-13. Denver, and we'll be back after this message from the NFL and a word for ABC stations. My name's Jill Hobbs. During the week, I am the secretary to our general manager here at the Buccaneers. Weekends, I do the message board. Oops, you have to be on your toes the whole game. The most fun, I think, is after the touchdown. The fans are jumping up and down. You got the skull and crossbones flashing on the board. You got music going. It's infectious. It's a lot of fun. The United Way program support the goals of the Presidential Summit to mentor, protect, and teach. Your contributions support these and other critical programs here in the Massachusetts Bay Area. I'm Chris Lane of the New England Patriots. And I'm on that special NFL United Way team. I've visited United Way agencies that make up a new spirit of volunteerism here in New England. United Way can also help to serve in the community. The NFL, the United Way, and you. The power of teamwork. Hey, whatever happened to Family TV? ABC Family Tuesday. The only place to get twice as much Tool Man. Uh -huh. America's newest family favorite, Soul Man. All you will hear is a roar from the tailpipe. Just like you in the morning, Dad. A new home improvement with a whole new Tim. I just finished shaving, honey. If you love home improvement and Soul Man, you're going to love Hiller and Diller. Yeah. Hey, Tony, look, I invented a new game. All ABC Family Tuesday. 
Good morning, starting with me, McDonald's Egg McMuffin. A hot, fresh egg, melted cheese, and a toasted English muffin. Yum! For only, listen to this, 99 cents. Can't get any better than that, right? Wrong. I am Big Mac. I, too, am only 99 cents. That's right, my two all-beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Just 99 cents. Hey! Egg McMuffin for breakfast, 99 cents. Big Mac for lunch or dinner, 99 cents. We're, We're both, both 99 cents each. each. How do you beat a day like that? Do a repeat. Mmm, right now at McDonald's. The average bill weighs less than an ounce, which may not seem like much. But to Carl, who just sprained his back, it sure adds up. Here's one way we can lighten his load. Try a company like 360. They give you the convenience of cellular, paging, and residential long distance all on one bill. Carl figured fewer bills would be okay with everyone. 360 Communications, right down the street. Thanks. Don't mention it. Monday Night Football, only on News 13. The Toyota Halftime Report. Brought to you by the new 1998 Toyota Corolla. My, my, how things have changed. Toyota, every day. From our New York studio, Chris Berman. Now, undefeated Denver and undefeated New England. 25 years after the Dolphins went 17-0. Can anyone do it again? Bears went 12-0 in 1985. The Skins went 11-0 in 91. We'll see. The Tampa Bay Bucs gave it a go at 5-0 until they were done in by Green Bay's defense yesterday in an afternoon chock full of big defensive plays. It was ironic because the Bucs' fast start was a direct result of the way their D has hit anything that moves or doesn't move. Second quarter at Lambeau Field. Trent Dilfer, the screen. No, it's Gabe Wilkinson. Watch. What? The defensive lineman able to leap tall buildings and quarterbacks with a single bound. His second TD of the year. You remember Wilkins? The fourth round pick in 94 from Gardner Webb. The pack hold on to beat the Bucs 21 to 16. Dallas at the Giants. Third quarter, final minute. Troy Aikman. Meet Tito Wooten. A pair of picks for Wooten. You remember Wooten, a fourth round pick in 94 from Northeast Louisiana. He's gone. 61-yard touchdown. The Giants have beaten the Cowboys now two in a row, 20 to 17 yesterday. Detroit at Buffalo, under two and a half minutes to go. We're tied at 13. Barry Sanders, of all people, stopped for a safety by Bruce Smith and Phil Hansen. The Bills tack on a touchdown, but the safety wins the game, essentially 22-13 Buffalo. And what about Pittsburgh at Baltimore? After three interceptions in the first half, Cordell Stewart of the Steelers brings the comeback. Three touchdown passes in the second half. Two to Charles Johnson. But the Coupe de Grasse, his second rushing TD of the day. The fake reverse. Badoopo! No Ravens gonna catch him. Let get him go. He could go all the way. 74 yards. Steelers win 42 to 34. Two TD runs, three TD passes. Whee! For Cordell. Only the seventh time since the merger, a player has had two touchdown runs, three touchdown passes. The first from Steve Young in 94. That list also includes a veteran of these Patriots Broncos wars, Steve Grogan, 1977. When we return, Al talks to the Patriots quarterback of the 90s and beyond. Drew Bledsoe, good game going at Denver. Stick around for the Toyota Halftime Report. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. All right. Let's go. Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Down. This Tuesday, a customer got shot dead in that bar. Andy Sipowitz and Bobby Simone are back in business. Got a gun. Good to be back working with you. Same there, Bobby. But it's not business as usual. You just made me the happiest guy in America, Gina. All new NYPD Blue. Your discretion advised. Get online with Monday Night Football at abcmnf.com. The big plays on defense continue tonight. A pair of picks by big play Willie Clay has gotten the Patriots back in it. Denver leads it 14-13 at halftime.
Drew Bledsoe is trying to duplicate a feat accomplished by tonight's opposing quarterback, John Elway, leading his team back to the Super Bowl. Fitting, because he told Al Michaels earlier, Elway was one of his football heroes. You're an emerging star in your own right. You've been to the Super Bowl, but do you still find yourself being, in effect, a fan every time you play John Elway and you see him on the well, opposite side of the know, field? I've been fortunate in that we play in it. We play, I play in a division where there have been some of the, some of the all-time great quarterbacks. So I, you know, we play against Dan Marino twice a year, and, and uh, until this year, played against Jim Kelly twice a year, and, and so I think that that any. Um, of the idolizing factors or whatever the, the hero worship or whatever was worked out of my system early on you know now I you know I appreciate watching John play and, and I still admire him as a quarterback probably you know in my mind the best to ever play but uh, uh, it's not the same now as it was now I just want to go beat him every quarterback every player is driven by the desire obviously to wear the ring to get to the Super Bowl and win it but individually on a personal basis what is it that you want to accomplish in your career well, I, I think that, that uh, you know, the, the relationship that I've been able to have with some of the, the great quarterbacks in the game with, you know, with Dan Marino and with John and, and with uh, some other guys has really made it clear to me that, that all those, those individual accomplishments really pale in the, unless you have that Super Bowl ring. You know, you, Marino is still playing, Warren Moon's still playing, John's still playing, all these guys are still playing, have accomplished amazing things statistically, but uh, uh, I think they all feel like, you know, they've got to win that ring or nothing's complete. Clearly, the big story after the Super Bowl with your club was Bill Parcells out, Pete Carroll in. I'm not quite sure exactly how to put this, but let's just say Parcells toughened you. Without a doubt. You know, Bill uh, was a guy that, that uh, presented you with a lot of adversity, you know, uh, during practice, through training camp. Uh, but he also is a very, very intelligent football coach, and I learned a lot of things from him. And, uh, you know, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I, you know, I'm glad that he was my football coach. I'm glad I had him for four years. Uh, and now I'm glad that I have Pete Carroll as my coach uh, because I feel like I can go onward and upward from here. What about uh, your family life right now? There's a big event coming up in November. <laughs> yeah, we're having, a, having our first child in, uh, in November, so uh, I'm ecstatic about that. I just hope that, uh, hope that I can be there. We're on the, thro on the road uh, three straight weeks uh, right around that time, so hopefully uh, things will work out. Drew Bledsoe, very composed, the aura of a winner. You can sense it and feel it. And tonight when his team could have very much folded down 14 to nothing, it was a Willie Clay interception that gave the ball back to Drew Bledsoe. And Bledsoe connects here with Keith Byers on the very next play, a 44-yard pass reception by Byers to make it 14-7. They add two field goals. And we've got a great one going in Denver. At halftime, it's Denver 14, New England 13. This mountain in North America is 20,320 feet. Cool. The Toyota Halftime Report has been brought to you by Toyota Trucks. Tough, durable, every day. We'll be back with a second half kickoff after this from our ABC stations. America loves Wednesday night. Don't worry, this is only a test. Will you marry me? Absolutely not. Which is why I propose. This is the real thing. I love you. Spin City. Then romp with TV's favorite couple. I walk up steps you built, and you shower in the shower I built. Oh, by the way, hot means cold, and cold means hot. Dharma and Greg, ABC Wednesday. Wednesday, Princess Diana, her true story in her own words. The secret interview of the man who got it. Plus, sexy superstar Brad Pitt. A don't-miss primetime Wednesday. Find out tonight on News 13. Coming up after the game, another tobacco lawsuit here in Florida. Find out why an Orange Park grandmother is suing R.J. Reynolds. Also, wouldn't you know it if your neighbors didn't throw out their trash for 40 years or more? Well, that's happening in a central Florida city. We'll tell you more. And find out how NASA is helping some kids with allergies have fun in the sun. Don't miss these stories and more on News 13, your local news station. It's 12 final hours at Imperial Furniture. 
One last day of code red reduction. Noon to midnight Tuesday is your last chance to buy surplus overstock and discontinued furniture at just pennies on the dollar. This final Tuesday, if it isn't clearance priced, it's sale price. And clearance tags mean up to a whopping half off. Make tracks now to Imperial Furniture, Harrison Avenue, in downtown Panama City. Now that the bedroom is finished, I can finally relax. Fortunately, with the real yellow pages, I can do all the work on my new living room right from here. Delivery at 12. Great. Cobalt blue glasses. Lovely. Carpet. No, a big area rug. Isn't it amazing how much you can do with this trusty book? It can do just about anything, except open the door. Use the real yellow pages from Bell South. Wilson Funeral Home was established in 1911, Bay County's oldest family-owned business, serving the community for four generations. The staff of Wilson Funeral Home has the expertise to assist you with burial or cremation funeral planning. There is a peace of mind that comes with having things taken care of ahead of time. Let funeral planning give you that peace of mind. Call Wilson Funeral Home today to assist you with funeral planning. Monday Night Football, only on News 13. Well, Drew Bledsoe and the Patriots fighting their way back into the game, 14 to 13, but the Broncos and Elway will get the ball as we begin the third quarter at Mile High Stadium on a gorgeous early autumn night. John cannot be happy with his first half. A couple of interceptions, a couple of Forty thrown balls. I think he would be the first to tell you. Adam Vinatieri to kick off. Juan Hebron back to return it. Vinatieri's kick is a bounding ball that bounces out of bounds, but after it crossed the goal line, a significant difference there because if you bounce it out at the one, the ball comes out to the forty. But if you bounce it out a yard in, it comes out to the twenty. Touchback. Well, let's go ahead and uh, examine the numbers from half number one. What jumps out at you there? Both teams with two turnovers. 24 total points scored off of turnovers. Both teams running the ball about the same. The passing edge goes to New England. Only 61 passing yards for Denver. That's way below normal. Now away from the 20, and they begin with Terrell Davis on the ground. Up to the 32, he goes on the first down. Willie Clay makes the tackle. Willie Clay is not having a bad ball game so far, is he? A couple of interceptions, some good run support. He's doing everything you expect out of a free safety. Watch Terrell Davis lower that shoulder. And I think as Lawyer Malloy, who just bounced right off, took a tremendous shot himself. And you touched on it, Dan. He's only 210, but he runs like he's 230 or 240. He packs a load for a guy that size. He'll hurt you. From the 32 on first down, that deep drop, a good protection, and an out to McCaffrey, and it's incomplete. And McCaffrey looked like he had Law all over him. He did. Law looked like he was trying to arrest him. He was trying to climb up his back. And they ruled they were both fighting for the football, and no one complained a whole lot about it. Man-for-man -man coverage. Ty Law 5'11", McCaffrey 6'5". Oh, he's got his hands all over. Mm. That's. You have to wonder how that goes without drawing a flag. He, he better not touch him again. It'll be a quick one. He put both hands on his waist to steady himself when McCaffrey made his break. That makes it a lot easier to play corner. Can't fight the law. Second down and 10, and Davis goes next to nowhere. Uh, the, but the law won. <laughs> he got away with a big one. They say justice is blind. I think it was the official on that one. That's right. <laughs> Officials have memories, though. You, what you want to do is come right back to McCaffrey on something else and uh, get the same kind of a coverage, and and then I think you might see a flag. Of course, if Law got in trouble, he could turn to the lawyer next to him mm -hmm. and get some help. Malloy. <laughs> could be a series. Third down and 10 from the 32-yard line. Luckily, neither one of them has feet of clay. Throws wide open as Rod Smith 
picked at the 50-yard line. Good move at the 40, taken down at the 38-yard line. Down Elway at his best. The defense had his receivers covered so well. When he started to run, they had to break the coverage, come up, and attempt to stop the run. He pulls up, finds Rod Smith, gets it in there, gets the first down. How many times over the 15 years that we've watched him play, he'll do something like this. Gets out of a heck of a mess back there. Now, the coverage breaks down because they have to play him as the runner. And well, he gets the ball to Rod Smith. There was a classic zone blitz by New England. They dropped both defensive tackles back into coverage, came off both corners, but Elway beat it with his movement. Now, John, with a swing out to Terrell Davis. And he gets taken down by Todd Collins at the 36-yard line after a minimal game. Good tackle by Todd Collins, open field against this guy, and Terrell Davis didn't like it. Because I should beat one man out there. Gary Kubiak, the offensive coordinator, calling the plays for John Elway. They were teammates here for a long time. Then he went off to Texas A&M and <clears throat> came back and has been a fixture here with the Broncos. Second and seven. Terrell Davis mm. goes down to the 24. Tackled by Willie Clay. And he, he hurt Willie Clay. The he problem is... Load. There's the man New England is missing, Willie McGinnis, their outstanding defensive end slash linebacker. He plays that elephant position. But look how open the middle is. Why the Broncos are number one in rushing after the fifth week. Look Huge at that hole. hole in the middle of the Patriots' defense. Davis now 80 yards on the ground, 17 carries. It was number 18. Davis at the 20 and a flag is thrown. Uh, face mask all over that and the flags come flying in. Todd First Collins. Foul. Face mask. Number 59. Defense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Ooh, they're going to hit the Ooh. big one. The big one, the personal foul face mask. Well, it, it was one that could hurt you. And ordinarily, you let go, but Todd Collins didn't let go. When you he spin held on, brought him all the way down with it. Or when you spin him all the way around, that's well, you that, can that's hurt him. That's deserving. Why they, that's why they why they could make the call. Yeah, that's deserving of the 15-yarder. And that puts the nose of the football at the 10, and that means it's first down and goal. Opening drive in the third quarter with the Broncos ahead by a point. Keep in mind, the Broncos field goal kicker Jason Elam is. In street clothes. Elway under pressure throws it away, but here comes the flag. Rod Smith says, "Where is it?" We're gonna, we're gonna get him for throwing it away. I think they're gonna say it was an uncatchable ball yeah. and pick up the flag. Right. The the officials looking at the contact and calling the penalty, and then he has to wait and see where the ball winds up. Right. And realize that it's not catchable, and that's the case here. All right, that ball thrown 10 yards out of bounds. Jerry Markwright getting the input. John now wishing he wouldn't have thrown it away. <laughs> it should be saying the ball wound up in Aurora, so it's, an, it's relatively uncatchable. different than interference. Mm -hmm. Holding happens prior to the snap to the ball being thrown. Of course, you got to look at it from Denver's standpoint. You know, Elway wouldn't have had to throw the ball away if his guy in the end zone wouldn't have been interfered with and held. If you look in the upper left-hand corner right on the goal line prior to the ball being thrown, I think that's Jimmy Hitchcock all over the Bronco receiver. First and goal from the five. Davis. Hey, it's over! Inside the three-yard line, and he's second down and goal. And again, a big surge. I'm surprised you haven't talked about Gary Zimmerman over that right side. He was a left tackle most of his career, Dan, when he came back September the 9th. 
decided he could play again. He went to the right tackle and and they've done a great job running the football. Great story Mike Shanahan telling us how he stayed with Zimmerman called him every month all the way during the offseason when John said he was going to retire. Look at that rating for Elway. 25.7. Statistically a bad night but on the scoreboard they have the lead and they're trying to extend it as Davis takes it to the one third down and goal. Stayed with Zimmerman talked to him. Gary's telling him coach my shoulders just won't allow me to come back. I'm just not healthy enough. Finally into the season he says I, I, I think I feel well enough that I can do it. Tony Jones who they got in a trade with Baltimore was already set at left tackle. Zimmerman goes over to right tackle and it's really really tightened this thing up front for Denver. Third down and goal they take the fullback out. So the ace back is Davis. And spread the field and now an empty backfield. And Elway takes it in himself. It worked for New England on their drive on a fourth down. And it works for the Broncos. The but quarterback sneak for the six. The motion by Terrell Davis was the key because the motion took the linebacker out of the middle. There was nobody to challenge Elway when he went over the top. And Davis was pretty close to going forward at the snap. But there's no flag. In that defensive alignment that the Patriots were using, watch Davis go in motion. Now look in the middle. You see right there, Ted Johnson has to go with. He has to go with Davis. That opens everything up in the middle. And Bentley kicks the extra point. So the Broncos take the opening kickoff of the second half. March down the field. It's the mile-high salute and an eight-point lead. been a tradition since 1876. Think about that. That's more than 120 years ago that this company started making Budweiser under Adolphus Bush. The keys that the family has always put in the forefront of anything that has ever been talked about at the dinner table since we were so big is protect the excellence of the product Budweiser. So it wasn't a question of cost, it was a question of make the proper product. Brew it and ferment it so that you have a taste that the consumer loves, appreciates, and wants to come back to. And I think he would be very happy that the generations of his family have practiced what he taught us. so glad we could get together for Monday Night Football. Yeah. I got the beer, I got the chips. I got the chili. And what'd you bring, out? A field green salad with a nice raspberry vinaigrette. Home Improvement Tuesday. Eight-point lead for the Denver Broncos. And Dave Meggett gets set to run back the kick. With Scott Bentley in his NFL debut. Booming this one three yards into the end zone. Make it past the 10 and tripped up and tackled up at the 22 yard line and a flag is down at the 24. Rick Dennis and the Denver special teams coach Jerry Markbright will give us the call. And this is if this goes against New England this is the second time tonight that they have hurt themselves with field position by a penalty on a kickoff return. Holding number 58 on the return. 10 yard penalty, first down, timeout. Marty Moore. The perplex Dante Scarnecchia watching his special teams unit send his team back to the 13. Welcome to our family. He was chosen. 
The first lady's been hit. He was framed. I'm gonna deliver the fugitive to justice. But I didn't pull that trigger. What are you gonna do? What they trained me to do. Start a door-to-door -door search, sir. They thought they could erase him. This man dies tonight, gentlemen. See, now you need to check that attitude, General. They picked the wrong guy. I'm a Marine. We don't plan. We improvise. Keenan Ivory wins. John Voight. Most Wanted. Rated R. Starts Friday. Even though he thinks a diet soft drink never tastes as good as a regular, he's decided to try a Diet Dr. Pepper. Well, it just goes to show things aren't always what they seem. Diet Dr. Pepper tastes more like regular Dr. Pepper. Dave Thomas is on the coast asking everyone about Wendy's new Fresh Stuff Peters. Your Peters are dreamy, Dave. I thought you'd like them. Wendy Fresh Stuff Peters, the only way to describe them is... Fabulous! You say either, I say either. I say neither, you say neither. Either, either, neither, neither. Let's call the whole thing off. You like potato, I like potato. I like tomato, you like tomato. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. Call everything off and go exploring in a Ford Explorer. Regional college football coming your way on ABC this Saturday at 12 30 uh, Pacific and 3 30 Eastern time Ohio State against Penn State Oklahoma Texas USC against Arizona State check the listings for the game in your area and then a beauty for us Dallas and uh, Washington from the nation's capital next Monday night Cowboys and the Redskins New England has hurt themselves again as Denver comes out with a five and a half minute drive. That that was a good drive for them and a great time to have it. 13 yard line, they get the 12 yard line where New England starts this drive with a Curtis Martin. Three yard pickup. He's tackled there by Steve Atwater. Sometimes you just take for granted the noise at Mile High Stadium. It, it so abruptly stops at the end of a play like that that sometimes you don't realize how staggering it is. Aerial photography provided by Goodyear. Look at downtown Denver on a gorgeous autumn night. That thing is sparkling. And you're right. Look at that blimp. It's flying backwards. And, El and Bledsoe fumbles on second down, recovers it himself, and it will be third down and nine. Must be a real headwind up there. <laughs> The smell of winter though and pretty soon the snow will be covering those mountains and the skis will be on what a wonderful place to live great skiing maybe the best in the world just a little west of here but so very uncharacteristic of him to bobble a ball Dave will ball the center Drew Bledsoe third and nine from the 12 yard line And that's caught, but short of the first down up at the 20-yard line as the catch is made by the tight end Ben Coates, but Bill Romanowski right there to make sure he goes no farther, and it's fourth down. And the key play in that series, the fumbled exchange, they got some positive yardage on the first play with a run by Curtis Martin, but then that was negated by just the, a fumbled exchange, the simplest play in football. Quick look at Darian Gordon. We talked about it earlier. The all-time leader in punt returns with over 14 yards per attempt. Do you see that average for Tupa? 53 yards. And this one is in the 50-yard range. In fact, Gordon calls for a fair catch at the 28-yard line. Not very often will you see a fair catch of a 52-yard punt. Pretty conservative right there. There wasn't a, a Patriot, rather, within about seven or eight yards of Gordon. AT&T, it's all within your reach, presents the Stat Pack. In the Vega Galaxy, 240 million light years away, Super Bowl I has not yet occurred. Well, according to Copernicus, a halftime show performed on Halley's Comet would be over in less than five seconds. Yeah, but in a parallel universe, right now the Buffalo Bills are four-time Super Bowl champs. Yeah. This game, it just boggles the mind. 
Yeah. yeah. The AT&T One Rate Plan has made long distance prices simple. It's our honeymoon. All right. Uh, calls from home are one more rate to anybody in America anytime. I call Pooski every day. And with AT&T? What about those guys who say we can say big over AT&T? Okay. With some, you've got to dial extra digits. And with one, your call's also got to be at least 20 minutes. I don't want to have to talk for 20 minutes. That's why. You... Let's get AT&T One Rate. You can't talk to me for 20 minutes? No, no. I. We never should have said that. No restrictions, no games. The AT&T One Rate Plan. Okay, Bongo, wave. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Come on, he's never gonna get it. Finally learned to wave bye-bye. The new redesigned Ford Ranger. The only compact pickup built Ford Tough. Mr. Wick becomes Mimi's love slave. Now she's the boss. You're fired. Operation Luau. Come and get the pig. An all-new Drew, ABC Wednesday. Bob Kraft, uh, a very engaging man, is the owner, CEO of the New England Patriots. Longtime season ticket holder who bought the team and then... Watched his club go to the Super Bowl last year. Looking on tonight, but his team is in arrears here, trailing by eight. Denver has the ball at the 28-yard line on first down. Terrell Davis pounds his way for a gain of nine, tackled by Lawyer Malloy. Denver once again exhibiting that rushing game that had them number one through the first five weeks. And Terrell, the leading rusher in the National Football League. Let's take a look at the quarterbacks. That's unusual numbers for a John Elway night. And he'll be the first to tell you he's not been really on it. A couple of Aaron throws that were picked off, a couple that he, he missed. Meanwhile, Davis closing in on 100, 21 carries for 97, and he's just about to the century figure here as he gets to the 40-yard line, and that's enough for a first down. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean, crisp taste. And the Home Depot, America's home improvement coach. And it's 100 yards for Terrell Davis tonight as you look at the state capitol, the Golden Dome here in Denver. Davis with 100 yards. That's the fifth time in Denver's six games that he has hit triple figures. Goes down as Elway retreats. Elway going deep, but the coverage is good. So good, in fact, it draws a flag. Uh, but it gets home. Hitchcock and Smith tangled. Ball was underthrown, and Rod Smith trying to come back to it. And he says it's going to go against Hitchcock. That way, just. Well, the, the teams were uncertain. They were remaining well back up the field, and Smith is saying, come on down, boys. Smith was kind of an afterthought for Elway. There's, there's, also, there's also a flag down in the offensive backfield back at the 37-yard line. Rod Smith on Multiple a fly pass here. And this is Jimmy Hitchcock on the inside. Got his arm inside. Yeah, passer. no question. Ruffing the, ruffing the passer on number 92 defense. That penalty is declined. We have pass interference. Number 31 defense. Automatic first down. Two sizable penalties. Whoa. The roughing call against Farrick Collins. But Hitchcock gets the interference for a lot more yardage. How about about 35 or 40? Oh, that's boy, that's actually Mike Jones, 96, not 92. Mm -hmm. And that's really not a whole lot of roughing. But the interference was a whole lot of yards. Yep. 39, in fact. First down at the 21-yard line. Well away. Rolling. Nobody home. Second down. Good coverage. A little play action. Elway rolling to his right. Uh, trying to go to number 84, Shannon Sharp. Good coverage by New England. Shannon has been kind of quiet tonight. They've done a good job shutting him down. But Davis has been noisy. In fact, Floyd Little had held a record of 15 100 yard games in a brilliant career here. And Terrell Davis, in less than two and a half seasons, has equaled that mark. 
He's played in 36 regular season games and 15 times he's hit 100. He's helped tonight by the fact that Howard Griffith is able to play hurt his blocking fullback. And the Bronx take a timeout, second and ten when we come back in Denver, where the Bronx are ahead by eight.